In case you've been asleep for the past few months, Facebook advertisers around the world are suffering. If you're one of them, give me a like for the video so I know how many of you are watching this video. What's causing the suffering? In actual fact, it's not one thing, it's a combination of many things. First is the impact of app tracking transparency, which was introduced by Apple to allow users to opt out of being tracked by apps, including Facebook, Instagram, and others. This has meant that instead of the real-time data Facebook advertisers used to rely on to optimize performance or to scale, they are now relying on aggregated event measurement and model data with which to make decisions. I put the word scale in inverted commas because I think it's a dreadful word to use in the context of advertising on Facebook ads or for that matter, any other platform. Scale is not a metric that you can measure. Scale is not a strategy that has defined steps you can take. If you put 10 Facebook ad media buys in a room, you'll get 10 different methods on how best to scale. Scale relies on cash flow, availability of product, supply chain, customer service. Just because you can 10x the total sales volume doesn't mean it's always prudent to do it immediately. You need to plan to scale. Okay, so that's my little mini rant over with. The second reason is that we're coming out of a pandemic, which has turned consumer behavior on its head. So what we as marketers have always known and been able to rely on about how and why people do the things they do, they're just not the same anymore. I can list a whole bunch more reasons, but those are two are pretty sizable. The techniques that worked before no longer work the way they used to. The buzzword of the day is now liquidity. As a Facebook preferred business partner, my agency has had the chance to unravel the four dimensions of liquidity, which is the cornerstone of any successful Facebook ad strategy in the second half of 2021 and beyond. And in this video, I'm going to show you what those four dimensions of liquidity are, why you need to start using them today in your Facebook ads account to dramatically improve your overall results, and how you can increase your sales results fast by using them. Hey, it's Jim Banks from Spades Media here, where we help direct-to-consumer businesses sell their products on Shopify using innovative techniques refined over the past 20 years. This YouTube channel covers platforms that are well-known like Google Ads, or like in this video, Facebook Ads. You'll learn things you will not have seen before, and you'll get great results your competitors will be envious of. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification that way you'll get notified when new videos are uploaded or when I go live. If you're already a subscriber, good to see you again, welcome back. Throughout today's video, any links to external resources mentioned will be posted in the description below. Some of those links might be to external tools or services. The links might be affiliate links where we earn a small commission. I wanted to be transparent with that in advance, but the recommendations are not influenced or sponsored by any of the companies mentioned. There's also a video timestamp for key jump off points in the video. So if you're the jumping around kind of person that doesn't like to go through things systematically, that will be the best place for you to go. I'm excited to tell you more about today's topic. So let's get going, shall we? I have a confession to make. Back in the day, I was one of the biggest drum beaters for not trusting ad platforms, including Facebook ads, to deliver the best results using their machine learning algorithm. I always fancied my abilities more and would talk about man over machine and laugh with impunity when my reps would suggest we run smart campaigns to trial it. I think many Facebook ad buyers still think they can beat the system. And sorry, folks, you can't. Don't get me wrong. I don't think that just because the four dimensions of liquidity are the dominant tactic that our days are numbered as media buyers. On the contrary, there will be times when running ads manually is a solid strategy to employ. But I would suggest it should be no more than 10% of your budget and you should only be running campaigns outside of the four dimensions to test hypotheses you have for your business, not as your main money-making activity. As media buyers, we really need to trust the machines more and not assume that only we can get the best results. What I'm sharing with you in this presentation is, for anyone that's been running Facebook ads for a while, not a new discovery. Understanding the concept of liquidity, though, likely is new. When I first studied the topic in the excellent Facebook Blueprint course, it really brought home the importance now more than ever of embracing the Facebook ads Power 5. I've been a big fan of the Power 5 ever since first learning about it. The Power 5 leans into machine learning and trusts Facebook's artificial intelligence to deliver results. Even though this video discusses the subject of liquidity and machine learning in the context of advertising on Facebook, the principles of liquidity will apply the same to Google Ads. Through responsive ads, and I know other platforms rely heavily on machine learning to deliver best results. So the principles are likely to be applicable there too. So let's dive in and look at the four dimensions of liquidity at a high level and then dive into each one in turn. Even though they're laid out the way they are, 
They are equally important in the overall mechanism of performance delivery. So don't think you only need to adopt one of the dimensions to succeed. There are four dimensions and you need to use all four. I'm convinced if you do, your days of stress and anxiety from running Facebook ads will diminish. You'll still have the desire to rant, but just not as much as your comp competition. So let's look at what these four dimensions are. First off, it's budget liquidity. This is in relation to how much money you should allocate to a campaign, how it should be distributed between ad sets, and looks at the best way to report and analyze the results from campaigns that run under budget liquidity. Next up is placement liquidity. Some advertisers I talk to never run ads on audience network. They just say it doesn't work. But by restricting placements, you make it harder for Facebook to spend wisely and deliver conversions in the most cost-effective way. By using placement liquidity and blacklists, you can get great results from audience network traffic. And it can also deliver high volumes of conversions because so many advertisers turn their back on the placement. And I've got the data to back up that statement. Up next is audience liquidity. This dimension laughs in the face of trying to go super granular with the audience you're trying to talk to. With the loss of data through app tracking transparency, it is harder now to build a decent sized audience using granular targeting like in the good old days. So lean into audience liquidity and watch your results improve. Lastly, we have creative liquidity. Now, creative agencies will tell you how important creative is, and they're absolutely right. But we've had amazing results from some of the most hideous looking images or videos that make no sense. You see, context is just as important as creative, which is why leaning into creative liquidity offers the prospect of achieving better results because Facebook can use what they know about the visitors, history, intent, device, location, time of day, day of week, to offer up the ad combination which they believe will most likely deliver the desired conversion outcome you're looking for. If they only have one crappy ad with a video and nothing else and a slew of emojis, you put Facebook's machine learning in a corner and it just won't deliver the results that it might. Robots are only as smart as the people that program them. You can teach a robot to play a game better than a human, perform a task like driving safer than a human, and there are many more examples. In the context of advertising, machine learning is growing in strength. So with Facebook ads, what are the key points in machine learning in advertising? Let's start with one which should be obvious, but I'm amazed how many advertisers get it so wrong. If you're an e-commerce business looking to sell products, you're looking for sales, period. So trying to optimize for a metric that is not your key business goal is just plain bonkers. I see so many advertisers trying to optimize for a metric like add to cart or initiate checkout when what they want is purchases. So in machine learning, make sure your ad objectives align with your business goals. So if you want sales, instruct Facebook to optimize for purchases and nothing else. Next, you need to give Facebook sufficient time and data to optimize. It's incredibly naive as an advertiser to give them a $5 a day budget on an audience of 20 million and expect them to get any meaningful results that they can replicate as you increase your budget. So make sure that you give Facebook enough data to learn and adapt and expand. Finally, with the onset of app tracking transparency, your knowledge of events that happened on your site are likely to be better than Facebook's. If someone opts out of being tracked by Facebook and they make a purchase from an ad they see via another channel, you need to let Facebook know that this purchase took place because they don't know it happened like they used to know. The combination of advanced match, Facebook Pixel, Facebook SDK, and the Facebook conversion API will give you the best chance of making any lookalike audiences more robust, make Facebook's machine learning better informed to decide what actions it should take and put you ahead of your competitors. If you are a Shopify or Shopify Plus user, then I can highly recommend the integration that Elevar has for Conversion API. There is a link to their solution in the description below. It's a little technical to set up, but once it is set up, it supplements the conversion data using Conversion API and the extra data can be impactful in delivering more sales in the future. I know that Shopify has a Facebook app integration, but I prefer to do things outside of their native apps. The reason for that is that the tracking functionality that is hard coded into their app doesn't align with what I think is best practice in respect to tracking parameters. So now that you've seen what these four dimensions are at a high level, I'm sure many of you will think this all sounds very familiar, Jim, and it did to me at first. But when I dived into each dimension, there were some really key points for each that I wanted to highlight in the next slides. Let's start off with the key points for budget liquidity. One of the first decisions you have to make as an advertiser is how much money can I afford to spend on this campaign? Most advertisers approach this from a 
how much can I afford to lose viewpoint rather than a, how much do I want to make? Your marketing team should have an idea on how many sales per day, per week, per month, per quarter, per year you expect to get from each channel in your marketing mix and how much each sale should cost. In setting up a campaign, you need to decide what your campaign objective is, what your campaign bid strategy is going to be, whether you're going to use day parting, and most importantly, whether you're going to use campaign budget optimization or CBO versus allocating the budget at the at said level. But what is CBO? By definition, campaign budget optimization will distribute your budget across ad sets to get more results depending on your delivery optimization choices and bid strategy. Importantly, you can control spending on each ad set if you want to. Depending on what bid strategy you choose will impact the budget allocation to ad sets you might have in a campaign. Importantly, if you move budget from one ad set to another and don't use CBO, then this action is deemed to be a significant change and it resets the learning phase for the algorithm and it will impact performance over time. Whereas CBO reallocates the budget on the fly based on where the best con cost con conversions can be obtained. CBO helps you maximize total value and to simplify campaign management, saving you time for other tasks. If you use the lowest cost bid strategy, Facebook finds the lowest cost per optimization event for your overall campaign and not for a specific ad set. As a result, you may notice that you have an ad set with a higher budget allocation that doesn't have the lowest cost per action. This is due to the breakdown effect. If you have an ad set that has exhausted all of the lowest cost conversions, the system moves to another ad set to find the lowest cost conversions there. While the CPA in that ad set might be higher, that doesn't mean the system is spending inefficiently. It simply means the opportunities in that ad set were more expensive than the lowest cost opportunities that were taken in the first ad set, but were still the next most cost effective results that could be obtained from the ad sets that were left. Placement liquidity is more than just choosing between manual placements and automatic placements. Automatic placements is where you allow Facebook to show your ad in every possible place, giving you more potential exposure for your campaign. There might be times when you don't have creative for a particular type of placement, like a video in the right format or size or length. In those instances, there are a number of tools that Facebook suggests can be used, and they also have some cool tools that allow you the ability to chop up a video that is too long yourself. I found that when I combine automatic placements with CBO, the results are often spectacular. It simplifies the setup process, removes some of the decision making, and it frees up time to focus on ensuring the landing page is robust enough to deliver sales. Lastly, on placement liquidity, there might be times when you don't want to use automatic placements or you're concerned about brand safety. In those instances, you're totally okay to use manual placements, but just try to choose at least four placements. And for brand safety, you have placement opt-out, inventory filters for sensitive content, block lists, and live stream opt-out to use to control where your ads appear. We've been spoiled with our ability to do hyper-targeting in the past. Prior to the Cambridge Analytica scandal, if you wanted to target left-handed plumbers in Peru who were fans of Taylor Swift, married with two kids aged under three, you could do that. Well, okay, maybe not that granular, but it was really specific. With the onset of app tracking transparency, the detailed information is not available in Facebook anymore. It still exists outside of Facebook. There are plenty of third-party data brokers who have audience data that can be used, just not directly inside the Facebook ecosystem. The first thing you need to be doing for audience liquidity is to set broad parameters. You should pair the broad audience with the interactions you know about via your own first party data, which is typically site visits, page engagement, purchases, and so on. It is still perfectly acceptable to use gender, age, and location as audience limitations. If your product doesn't cater to a young or old audience, then it's perfectly okay to not want to target those people. Just bear in mind that Facebook has lost its ability to know what age and gender people are, so the accuracy might not be as good now as it was before. Custom audiences and lookalikes can still be effective for Facebook advertisers. Custom audiences are great for remarketing, upselling, or cross-selling. You can also use them to create audiences who viewed one product but didn't buy or who abandoned your cart. If that audience size ends up small, you're able to supplement the audience with a lookalike audience of people with similar characteristics to the original audience. Custom audiences can also be customer or CRM data, and you should look to refresh your customer data regularly. 
We use a tool called Connect Audience, which is part of the Connect Suite to sync our Facebook audiences with our client's CRM in real time. And there are links to both of those in the description below. If you want to expand an audience targeting without setting up a custom audience, then you can use Detailed Targeting Expansion or DTE to give your ad set greater potential to stay running with decent performance for longer. Last but by no means least in the four dimensions is creative liquidity. According to Facebook stats, 56% of the success comes from creative. But creative is more than just the visual assets used. Your best chance of success is that the person viewing your ad sees it as a personalized experience just for them. Once you start constructing your ads before submitting them for editorial review, you might want to take some time to customize some of the placements you are using. With most sites now at 60 plus percent of traffic coming from mobile devices, a great looking image on a 27 inch 5K Retina iMac might not look so good on a teeny tiny mobile phone screen. Some of the specific ad placements from Facebook are specifically for mobile devices. So it's worth spending some time optimizing the assets for certain placements. This next one has been the biggest reason we have run ads for a longer period of time with no ad fatigue. The ads all end up with tremendous social proof and Facebook are able to choose from a selection of assets to make the combination it thinks is most likely to bring about a successful outcome. Ultimately, if the end user has a bad experience, that reflects badly on everyone. You as the advertiser spend ad dollars without making sales. Facebook have a disgruntled advertiser and an end user that is less than happy that their time has been wasted. Everyone is in it together. Finally, in creative liquidity, not everyone that sees your ad has English as their native language. With dynamic language optimization or DLO, it helps you to expand internationally. But localization is more than just translating the ad. You need to be super mindful of the landing page experience and any cultural or financial anomalies in different countries that your ads might be targeting. So that's a wrap then on the four dimensions of liquidity. I must apologize, you probably have heard pigeon noises and planes flying overhead. That's just the, the, the beauty of living near an airport and living near trees with pigeons in it. I hope you found the video to be of some value to you and that you've learned something that you can take and apply to your ad buying strategy today to bring about growth in your financial fortune. If you did find the video to be of some value, consider giving it a like. Leave me a comment and be sure to subscribe to my channel so when I post new videos or go live, you know about it. I'm working on some killer stuff for Facebook and other channels as well, and I'd hate for you to miss out. Thanks again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.